and welcome to ESO Weekly for April uh, 19th and, uh, and that it's, good stuff. Uh, it's game over, man! Game over! Apparently. Wow, aliens reference, nice. That's, that, yeah, that's what the internet is screaming lately, at least uh, some vocal, vocal, vocal people. Yeah, man. <laughs> so uh, this week we will be touching on the 20 minute leaked gameplay footage. Um, we'll also put a link down in the description to that video if you have not seen it yet. Oh yeah, you should definitely check that out. Yeah. Totally worth your time. <laughs> After that, we will then go into what if ESO fails? Uh, since the whole topic and people are getting kind of antsy and a little worried about the game where yeah. it's at right now. I think it's funny because some people paint in their mind like, oh man, this game, there's so much like hype behind it now. What if it failed? Like, oh my, wouldn't that be crazy? So we'll cover that, and then we'll also go into our own question of the week. Since, I'm just going to admit it, we're recording this early because we have family coming down, and we're not going to have time to do it later. Oh in the my week. gosh, you shattered the illusion. They're Whatever. supposed to feel like we're talking with them right now. It's Wednesday. In the okay. moment. <laughs> and then we'll go into our community segment, as always, where we'll answer your questions and thank our weekly sponsors. All right, so let's go into it and talk about this 20-minute of leaked gameplay footage. Yes. Now, first off, let me just say, it's freaking beta. Stop worrying about things. It's at least six months until this game even comes out, so that is six months of development uh, to optimize it, add content, make sure it's butamous. That's it. That's a word. Totally a word. Butamous. It yeah, is beta. I, There's a reason why they have an NDA, why it's a closed beta, because they are very much still in the development of the game. Tons of things are going to change, get better, possibly worse, we don't know. Sure, and I'm, it's a good point to bring up because, you know, and at the risk of sounding like a bunch of fanboys, you know, jumping to the defense of the game. Albeit, you know, people's comments and concerns that they've been pointing out in this leaked beta footage have been valid and you know it, and if a game like that released like right now I probably wouldn't have enjoyed uh, certain aspects of it either I can tell you for sure and we're gonna go into that more yeah I will say uh, the important thing to keep in mind is the fact that you know there's a limited amount of people playing it and there's an NDA on it for a reason and, you know, I watched this beta footage with a grain of salt from the beginning because you know for a fact, we had, how many people were attending this PAX East thing? We had hundreds of gamers doing oh, a Oh yeah, they had test. lines like wrapped around two or three walls at PAX East, they were saying. Oh yeah. Uh, waiting like three hours just to play the game for 15 minutes. Sure. And before this beta ever happened, we had a ton of gamers trying out a very uh, specific set, you know, something that... ZeniMax deemed worthy enough and polished enough for the get public to actually get their hands on and test. You know, that they felt like was a good representation of their game. And all the comments and all of the articles that I've, com th that I've read coming off of that have all been positive and glowing. They've said that it was great graphics were great. Some even said rivaled Skyrim, which I still won't believe to this day until I'm actually looking at it for myself. But yeah, that's a Im very important thing to keep in mind is that what you're seeing is not meant for the public yeah. and it's for a reason and also let's just mention the video's quality overall um, you can just look at it even in the 1080p option if you find a version still out there um, I know there Zenimax is being really good at taking a lot of these videos down but uh, just looking at like the text and stuff you can tell that whatever program he was using to record or whatever uh, encoding software he was using was pretty terrible because it has downgraded the video quality immensely. And now, like, I can only find 720p uh, versions of it, which is, makes it even worse. Sure. So, yeah, the actual video quality does not do the game justice. Sure, and I, can, and I definitely could see why people were looking at that and saying, well, this looks, like, really, really grainy and pixelated. It looks like a terrible generic, like, MMO-type thing you're looking at here. And uh, the moment I realized that what we were seeing was a degraded quality because of the recordings because it was the recordings fault was uh, when you were looking at like the text in the game and like the chat box down at the bottom left hand corner and you couldn't even read the text it was so pixelated you couldn't read the text I, I could barely see what was being said on the screen uh, in the chat box and you know if that doesn't tell you how degraded the actual recording was then I don't know what will no. so I saw it actually before you had and I did see a 1080p version. The text was was readable. It was, you know, legible and stuff. 
but uh, even still, I could tell that there was pixelation going on, that it was not the best recording at all. Yeah. So for those that did see a more earlier version of the leaked footage before it was uh, downloaded 26,000 times and encoded that many more times over and reposted on the internet, yeah, even the original was still pretty poor quality. That I but uh, now that we're going through that, let's talk about the problems that we did see in the game without going through too much detail because we don't want to be breaking NDA <laughs> over a person that has also broken yeah, NDA. Exactly. And then as we're going through this bullet list, just uh, keep in mind that this is beta. Like, these are all problems that could not be present at all when the game actually hit shells. Yeah, not you know, to mention, like, we months. like, it was 20 minutes of gameplay, but half of that was just looking through menus and a character customization and sitting in a boat. So, you know, 10 minutes worth of uh, footage is not nearly enough to actually represent what the game's all about. So, uh, the first problem, I guess one of the things was, like, where you found a quest out in the wild didn't seem organic enough to you. Yeah, sure. So, uh, Zenimax actually came out and said on their uh, a Variety article that we are going to be able to pick up quests uh, just like in our past test games by finding, like, notes on corpses and just all these random miscellaneous things. And I was saying how I, like, those are my favorite kind of quests, the ones you just stumble across organically. And, yeah, and we saw that in the leaked uh, beta footage. We saw an example of that. The particular example I'm talking about is uh, when he was walking up on a corpse, searched the corpse, and uh, there was no note on it. It just, it said, a text showed up that said you found a note, and then it lists the, uh, what the note it was said. It like some kind of artifact or something. Yeah, some kind of artifact. And that wasn't even my biggest problem. Okay, so he didn't pick up a physical note item from the corpse. That might be okay. But what, what I didn't like was the fact that uh, the minimap displayed exactly where this corpse was and that it gives a quest. Like, I don't like that. I want to be able to stumble across this uh, corpse organically. And you can argue, oh, well, just disable the minimap then. And I think that is an option. Or you could mentioned. probably just disable those icons as well. Yeah, because I, and that's what I would do. Going into this game, I don't want the MMO minimap because exactly what I thought about when I saw that minimap with all of its dots on it yeah. is like every other MMO. They, those might as well be question marks from <laughs> World of Warcraft. It's the exact, I don't want that. I've never, ever wanted that. I want my feeling to be way more organic. So when I actually do stumble across this corpse and search it, I might oh, think in my head, I might find items, I might find... And then all of a sudden I find a quest. Oh, whoa, that's, this is cool, and this is... yeah. I, I'm glad you're like that, too, though, because I'm actually the opposite. I like to have some something at least guiding me a little bit. I, I like a little bit of guide rails that at least like tells me where I should kind of be going or leading towards. Um, so I kind of like that. I'll probably keep that uh, feature up there. I do like that they had the UI scaling, though, so you can make your UI really small. Because I, I noticed the, the standard size of that uh, mini-map was way too big for me. In the quest thing, I would make that a lot smaller. Sure, yeah. My ideal way to play would be, yeah, no mini-map and with a compass. And the only thing the compass points me to, not quests, just locations. Like, I just want exactly like the test games have done, you know. I'm an adventurer looking for adventure, not knowing what the hell he's going to find. I love that blindly stumbling around. And some people like the structure, and it would be great to have uh, both those options. Yeah. Um, another thing we saw, I guess an example of this, is when he was going into like, the entrance of some kind of a Dwemer ruin that looked like uh, there was a lantern sitting on the table and a few other things sitting on the table. None of them seemed to move. They all seemed to be static objects. Yes. So uh, something we would like to see event is more things to just pick up and move maneuver and manipulate and stuff oh yeah that's going to be a big thing for a lot of test fans and we've said this from the beginning is that all the little knickknacks the shinies that you find scattered around the world and particularly in houses and you know in indoor and close places like that's fun like what's not fun about shooting a sweet roll off the table it's fun and uh yeah we didn't see that in the beta and again this could be just because it's beta and that's what I'm going to chalk it up to until I actually get a hands-on with the finished product. But, yeah, we're going to want to be able to manipulate uh, uh, objects. We don't want cardboard scenery. Just static things glued down to tables. That's boring. That's not Tess. All right, and uh, another thing that you didn't really like, I didn't mind it, though. They might be just placeholders, but the uh, the menu system that they're using right now. It's kind of just... 
plain black background, a little a little opaque, but you can still see through it, and it kind of fades in. It's it's graduated, I guess you would call that. And uh, I don't know, did that seem too plain to you? You like to um, dress it up? You know, it wasn't so much the plainness because I would argue uh, Skyrim's uh, menu system was extremely simplistic as far as you know aesthetic. It was white text, ba black background, kind of just like you were seeing in the leaked footage and I am fine with that as long as it's lean and it looks like stream a little bit more like uh, streamlined and what I mean by that is like even in Skyrim when you were in the menus they were like s transparent in a way you know mm -hmm. you could still see through them into the world and any opportunity they get where you can still be in the world while messing with your with your shit and your inventory and stuff like that like I welcome that and I will say I, I particularly liked the fact that when you're in game and you click your like character menu the camera shifts over and shows your character in the world as you're moving stuff around you know anything that keeps that sense of immersion still there is always going to be welcomed in my book um, there were a couple menus that seemed a little too large um, I don't really remember what they were, but some kind of like took the whole screen up, and I didn't like that. I also didn't like so much the map system. Again, these could all just be stand-in things that are just functional. They're there just to help you get through the beta. Uh, they'll probably dress it up and stuff. But yeah, so far right now, I did not like the whole map system. We've beta tested MMOs in the past, yeah. and this is something I've seen many, many times before, particularly with the map. You know, the map didn't look very enticing, and I think that's everybody agrees across the board and you can tell just by looking at it it's not a finished product you have the map on one side and then a bunch of black empty space on the right hand side where just there's nothing at all and that's just a result of beta that's very easy and plain to see especially in this case so yeah, um, yeah I'm sure those won't be the uh, the finished maps we see yeah, there there were still a few other problems that I did see. Like there were quite a bit of pop-ins and stuff like that, and there did seem to be a little bit of lag. But again, this is still very much in closed beta, and very small sample sizes. They haven't even gone into like the large-scale uh, closed betas or even open beta. So yeah, there's still a lot of optimization that needs to be done. Definitely. Make sure that everything runs smoothly without like any lag whatsoever. So I mean, they still have a lot of work to do but they still have a lot of time as well. So yeah, stop worrying guys. Yeah, I think, you know, I think a lot of the worry is coming from the people who probably aren't familiar with uh, MMO beta tests and stuff like that. Maybe a lot of just exclusively single player uh, people that, you know, haven't seen, because they're being introduced to this kind of for the first time where you're seeing a game months and months and months before it's uh, released and you're seeing people playing with it and stuff where you don't really get that in single player you get demos and stuff and uh it's always very uh it's usually pretty polished that little segment that exactly. demo is really polished yeah exactly all right so uh, let's move away from the negative things and start talking about the things that we actually liked within that uh, leaked footage um right off the bat the beginning of the video was him creating his character and he didn't even go into a whole a whole lot of options um, but there were a lot of customization options when it came to making your character. Like a ridiculous amount. Like I know you'll be stuck in there three, four hours making your oh, character. you know that. There were yeah. so many sliders. <laughs> then there were like different tabs to go through which all had their own different sliders. And yeah, it's, it's, it's immense. Like Skyrim's customization can't even touch what we're going to see in ESO. When you were looking at the customization, were we able to manipulate certain parts of like the face, like say I want to draw my chin out farther, yes, and stuff like that. Like that was all. They there. all like almost was every feature of the face had a slider, and then there was the triangular slider that you see in Rift, where you can change the angular, uh, yeah, like the smoothness, the softness. If you want full features, they had like heroic features, great, whatever, yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And that also goes for the body too. So if you want a fat Argonian, you can make a fat Argonian. Yes, I'm so glad. And that's another thing I want to point out about what I liked in the beta. Because watching like the environments and the people and looked... I was really afraid last week. Because last week we got the Ogrim. And he looked very much cartoony. You know, I said something that you would find in Swator or, you know, in other MMO. I don't know why, what it is about MMO developers, but they feel like they have to basically make a mockery of their game when they pull it over to the MMO verse by making 
like because because you can stylize you can make stylized assets in a game without making them cartoony and yeah. like unreal where the ogrim we had like these fingers that were like moving as much as his jiggling stomach like it looked <laughs> like something out of a mickey mouse cartoon it was just <laughs> it was wrong the way it was animated and i was that was one thing i was so glad to see in this uh, leaked beta footage was the gritty feel it there reminded was still some me grittiness, yeah. yeah it reminded me of like an MMO that I've played like an age of Conan that was like a mature MMO and you could tell just by looking at the art assets uh, I was particularly drawn to the uh, particular clothing that this um, mage character was wearing you know this was a cloth robe but it wasn't like a neatly pressed you know colorful cloth robe this thing had tears and like you can see he sewed it in yeah, places stitching and stuff stitching yeah. and stuff like that was neat and the characters also looked very sinister you can make them look ugly yeah, we you can saw, make them however you want you can and that's what i hated about uh guild wars 2 that was an aspect i did not like everyone was beetle everyone's a supermodel in that <laughs> game everyone's a supermodel in well that there game. were a few that were pretty ugly um, i can make a pretty ugly norm yeah i mean if you really try you can make an ugly but you couldn't really get gritty you yeah. couldn't. You were. Oh, you always had this clean face. It was all pretty and perfect. And you know that's what I liked about Skyrim coming over from Oblivion was that they had dirty faces and stuff. Like these look like adventurers, people that were wanderers and stuff. And that's. I definitely got that from the leaked footage. So uh, yeah, kudos. All right. Uh, also, tons of options that we saw. And he didn't even go through like all of them in detail, but. Uh... Like the UI options and just all the in-game options that you can change around, nameplates. There was just an immense amount. I will be in there for quite a while on my first character. That's probably going to be the first hours just setting up the game exactly how I want it to look. And just things that I want in the game, things that I don't want in the game. Like the mini-map and everything, things that I want to show up, things that I don't want it to show up. So it's going to take a long time to just make sure my UI and my gaming experience is how I want to do it. And that's what's awesome about ESO, is that they're giving you the opportunity to do that. Yes. Um, it's going to be very important when this game release just how many options they end up giving us in the end, because, especially because of the diversity you're drawing into this game, you're mixing, you know, people have compared it to oil and water. MMO crowd with the single player test crowd. Like, you couldn't get more opposite than that. And to have a huge amount of customization everything and uh, all the options of the UI and stuff, it's going to be so, so important. So uh, it's, it's good to see that they're nailing that down early on. In the um, also, another thing, uh, this isn't like new or anything in games, but uh, the dynamic sounds and lighting was actually pretty cool too. Let's talk about like when we, uh, we were both watching it, uh, me for the like third time or something, Josh for the first time, when he was in the boat and uh, there was that cat meowing or whatever. And I was telling you, it's like the first time I heard it, I thought it was freaking outside or something. It was <laughs> meowing, but it was actually just a cat in the game. I'm like, what the heck is going on? I don't know if, like, it was just my system or whatever, but, like, the 3D, you know, sound of it does make it sound like it's off into the distance yeah. of wherever that item is. Y you Earth, were taking yeah. your boot off, man. You were ready to throw it at some, ca <laughs> I was some like, what stupid the stray is outside. From? I'm like, oh, it's the game. Yes. And also, just, like, uh, uh, walking around or running around, the sounds do change as you're walking in different uh, terrains. So when he was going through grass, it sounded different from the packed earth to uh, walking on wood and stuff. Again, this is nothing new, but it is good to see that that kind of stuff is in the game. Exactly, yeah. Because I think music and sounds, like ambient sounds and stuff like that, is so, so important mm -hmm. for setting a mood, you know? And coming off of, I've been playing a lot of Bioshock Infinite recently. Oh man, what a great game. And you know if they're good at anything it's setting this mood and setting this environment and how they do it is with you know sound is definitely one of the human senses that we we pick up and you know when you're in a ship it should creak and stuff like that when you step outside you hear the waves crashing in and stuff like that if you're walking on snow it should it should crunch under your feet like you should hear those sounds it's so very important to the whole experience and for immersion that player that wants to put the headset on and go to first person mode and just get lost, like that's gonna help me with the emergent stuff. So yeah, glad to see some good sound assets because it was we did recognize it yeah. practically like immediately. Right away, yeah. Yeah.
and even the uh, the lighting was pretty good. It, it reminded me a lot of Skyrim. You know, whenever you like leave a cave and like takes just a, a split second for the light to kind of like whoosh on you, kind of like how your eyes normally work. Yeah, like your eyes have to adjust yeah. to the light. They they had that when he if you if you watch it again uh, when he leaves the boat for the first time, that light takes a uh, like a split second to kind of just whoosh on you. It doesn't just all of a sudden bright. No, it like yeah, it just reminded me a lot of Skyrim. I guess one of the last things we uh, noticed was it actually, I don't know if the, the player just sucked or what, but uh, it seemed kind of tough. He was fighting a mud crab, which first of all, you yelled, oh my god, mud crab, he's fighting a mud crab. Yeah, uh, he was kind of getting owned a little bit by that mud crab. He was getting pwned by that mud crab, man. Those are nasty creatures, you know? Apparently. And uh, he was getting his ass whooped, and that's it was great to see. Every time those wolves just chomped into him and he died, yeah. spamming the same ability, like, that was great to see. And yeah. I hope this game, I hope they don't dumb it down at release. I hope that's something that sticks around from the beta and gets put on the shelves, because... Having that challenge, it just engages me, and it's 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 great to see. And yeah, I, uh, it, it needs to force you to play well. Exactly. It cannot be a face roll. I mean, a lot of us are tired of face rolls. I mean, there's so many MMOs out there that just keep dumbing their systems down to just or mechanics down to reach the most amount of people, and it's just it's it's been killing the genre. Oh for us. yeah, it's mass appeal. They're all trying to go for mass appeal, and the best way to do it is to dumb it down for a little five-year-old Jimmy. Sorry to any five-year-old viewers out there. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's many of them. Yeah. But uh, gone are the days for me. I'm, I used to love the MMO where I could play it on one screen and watch something else on the other and just tune out, basically. But I'm, I'm done with those days, man. I want something engaging. I want something that holds my attention because that's when you know it's good. Yep. Okay, so I guess that's all we are going to talk about that gameplay footage. Um, so yeah, we don't condone people taking or breaking NDA to upload this kind of stuff, especially such a poor quality video. Um, but honestly, I am glad I saw some of this yeah, stuff. Yeah, hey, if you're going to leak it, at least do it right, man. Come on. <laughs> give us the high res. Give us, give it up, give it to us I in mean, all yeah. its glory. But so, stop breaking NDA. But I can't say that I wasn't glad to at least see some of the stuff in there. Oh yeah, I mean, so, uh, secretly, like it was fun getting to see like. <laughs> and all it does, it doesn't hype me. It doesn't like discourage me. Neither. Like my opinions remain unchanged. If anything, it just cements the things that I've been, you know talking about and, and been discussing with yeah. you. And I guess just a final note on it, for you guys that have been discouraged by it, don't freaking worry, it is closed early beta still six months or six months or more of uh, development to go into this game still uh, they have a lot of work to do a lot of time to do it in, so don't worry. It's just part of the process we'll, we'll see the final product eventually and hopefully it'll blow our minds. And if it doesn't We'll be moving on. And that's what, that's what our next topic is. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Did you like that transition? It was yeah, beautiful. It was lovely. Except now that I'm pointing it out, it totally destroyed yeah, it. Way to go. So what if ESO fails? God forbid. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Um, It'll be the end <laughs> of the world as we know it. Yeah. Um, I it's, feel it's a fine. It's a great topic to talk about because nobody knows, right? Wow. Nobody. This could release and be the best thing since sliced bread. Or it could release, be completely and utterly generic, and fade away into the realm of oblivion. Haha. <laughs> T T he the void. See how I did that? With Sithis. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, let's just say it. It would not be the end of the world. I mean, no, no, it would be. It would it, be. It would not. It would be the end of Tamriel, maybe in in the game, but. <laughs> As for our world, it would not be the end of the world. Yes, it would totally suck, and we would feel let down and everything. But, I mean, come on. Uh, if it is subscription-based, it can always go to free-to-play. And then, like, it would still be worth popping in there from time to time and just playing it. It might not be, though. That's, <laughs> That's true. It but might is be, that no, terrible? seriously. It could be absolutely... God, if this... I'm not going to play this. And let me make this... Now, let me be clear. Uh, if this ends up being an average MMO... Maybe just a little fun. Maybe it's fun just because I'm playing it with friends. Like, I'm not going to stick around. I'm gone are those days. I've, like I've said before, I've played 
12 plus MMOs in the past and I have stuck around for hours and hours in an MMO that was just mildly amusing and I did it because I had a lot of time on my hands back then like nowadays I'm a busy guy and with all the great games that release I'm going to stick to just those great games I'm not gonna waste my time away in a mediocre I mean what would be would it would be the same for you would you stick around if it let's say it was just me it was meh it was meh <laughs> I would still give it a chance I guess like a uh, Guild Wars 2 I still I still stuck in there and uh played after completing my first character and I thought uh, it's it might be worth just sticking in there and uh continuing on maybe they'll come out with more content and sure it'll pique my interest again but it just has not happened so I I pretty much have just stopped playing that now maybe when the next expansion comes out come uh, I might get into it but I don't know before we discuss like what if ESO would fail let's define what would qualify failing for the Elder Scrolls Online because I think this this has multiple layers to it what would ESO have to do wrong to fail for the MMO crowd and what would ESO have to do to fail for the average test fan okay um start with the MMO side let's start with the MMO side sure um well with any MMO there's there's two aspects to it the PvE side and the PvP side so I guess first off with the PvP side if it's not fun or you know, like Cyrodiil. If Cyrodiil, Cyrodiil ends up just not being fun, or if it just ends up being a, a dumb Zerg fest or something, brainless, killing each other and not getting anywhere doing it, Sure. then I guess that would just not be fun for a PvP person. I mean, PvP is especially one that is this balancing act that could easily be broken. I mean, I've played very few MMOs that got PvP just right. The last MMO that I played that had PvP that was super fun and engaging was Planetside 2. And that was because it was like a first-person shooter and had some awesome systems, and it just worked well. What about the PvE side of it? Um, well, let's look at Guild Wars 2 and what uh, we feel they did wrong, and that was uh, having no end game whatsoever. They said that their entire game was its own end game. No, there was no end game to that game at <laughs> all. There was nothing to do once you finished your character and got the gear you liked because there wasn't a whole lot of gear to begin with. And it all looked ugly, by the way. Um, so, yeah, there has to be some kind of progression after you have reached your level cap. And from what we, sure. well, it looks to be like that there will be a lot of end game to do. But then we don't just want plain, boring endgame. It needs to still be engaging. We still need to feel like we're having fun doing it. And yeah. it's not just a grind. Sure, sure. Um, I would say, uh, and Swator also failed with the uh, PvE players, right? Yeah, and, Af uh, yeah, after the main story. You would be able to attest to that more than me because you were more on the PvE side of things. And uh, it failed, just, it didn't have enough uh, endgame uh, raids. Yeah, right? they, they took way too long to come out with new stuff, and there's only a few instances to do. So after that, the the only thing there was to do is like two, three instances, uh, and then collecting uh, those cube things. Uh, that was pretty much. Oh, it. those relics and stuff. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty much it. What ESO would have to do to succeed for the average Elder Scrolls gamer? Well, and. You go for it, man. I mean, I, I firmly believe this. For ESO to succeed for the average Elder Scrolls gamer, we're talking about a guy that probably hasn't played any MMOs in the past. He just He's interested in this because it's an Elder Scrolls installment and he wants to get more Elder Scrolls. This game, this MMO, has to be able to stand on its own. And by that, I mean if we just played this game, unplugged our computer from the internet, and what you won't be able to do. I mean, you have to have a... But just hypothetically, let's say we can remove the Elder Scrolls Online from the grid and you're just playing this solo. Will it stand up on its own? What does it have to do to stand up on its own? Well, it has to have fun and interesting and engaging quests. And what, a lot, what we've seen in so many MMOs, a majority of MMOs out there, they simply don't have that. It's the collect ten bear asses yeah, quest. They just give you chores. To yeah, do. chores to do. Oh, and and the stories aren't fun. Even the story behind the side quests aren't engaging at all. It, it, at least give us a little interesting story of why we're collecting ten bear asses. But usually <laughs> the story is, oh, um, I'm cold 
and I need some clothing. So go slay some bears and give me the fur off their asses. Like, it's so... It's just incredibly, incredibly boring. Um, I would say Switzor took a step in the right direction. Um, that was a f the funnest MMO I've leveled in to date because it had the Bioware RPG elements. And the main mission was a lot of fun because it was so fleshed out. Like, the class missions were a lot of fun. But the side quest still fell short. We still had run here, press E to collect this item and run back to me. So fetch, fetch quests, what slay quests, what other quests? Escort quests. There's another one. And... I can't remember what it was. Doesn't any, matter, whatever. Anyway, it's this very, very tired system that we've just seen over and over again in MMOs. And it might work for the MMO players who are used to the grind. Maybe they like the grind because it's relaxing or something. But it's not going to work for the test fans. The test fans need to be engaged. They need to have those moral choices too. They need to be making decisions and crafting a unique and fun story for their character. And if they don't get that in the Elder Scrolls Online, they're not sticking around. They're not going to stick around to see what makes MMOs fun. They don't give a shit. They want to play an Elder Scrolls game and they're not getting it. So that's how it could uh, most definitely fail for those guys. All right. But in the end, if it does fail, just keep in mind, this is a completely different developer from who makes the actual test games. So if this does fail, don't think like it will completely destroy the franchise. There's still going to be a test six made by Bethesda, so don't worry about it. Yeah, that was, that was pretty much one of the biggest reasons I was able to get a behind the Elder Scrolls Online, is because it wasn't the folks that, well... Well, because the folks at Bethesda, I wouldn't want them to make an MMO, an Elder Scrolls Online MMO. I want them to keep doing what they do best. They've got Epic down to a science with the Elder Scrolls series and with Fallout. And I love their single player experience. I would never want to get rid of that to work on an MMO project. And so, yes, so this is just an extra, an added extra. And if it succeeds, great. We'll have fun together with other test fans playing this test MMO. If not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> all this, I'm gonna erase from my memory. It's gonna be gone. I'm gonna take the, wait, what What's pill? What's ESO? What? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Why, oh, why didn't I take the blue pill? I'll take the blue pill. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, uh, and it was fun to follow. And, you know, part of following it is the whole fact that we get to, you know, affect change in the development. While this game is still being developed, we get to give the developers our honest feedback and help craft this game into something that will hopefully be great. And, uh, and yeah. yeah. So if you guys do get into beta and stuff, please give as much feedback as you possibly uh, can. That is the yes. whole reason for the beta. It's not for you to just, oh, I'm in the game, I'm playing beta, and blah, blah, blah. It's to give the developers your feedback so, they, so that they know where the problems are, what problems you see, and so they can see how they can solve those issues. I take it back. I said before I didn't want to get into the beta, but I do now just because you said that. Because I want to get those little forms that say, what is your feedback on this quest? And like type a five paragraph explanation of what could be better. What could? Oh man, I would love to leave feedback about that sort of thing. I need to I need like test for their game or something. Looking at like stuff we see now, do you think it would fail? Yeah, because that's the big question is if we, you know, if we think it will fail at the moment. I mean, you guys wouldn't be watching this video and we wouldn't be making these videos if we didn't think that the game could succeed. And, oh god, I don't even want to put a number to it. I was about to say like a percentage chance, but I'm not even going to do that. Um, if I had to gamble, if I was a gambling man, I would say that ESO will succeed, but it will succeed for one crowd or the other. I think this, this balancing between MMO and test game is just going to prove too much and too hard for them to do in five years. I think they're going to have sacrificed on one side or the other, and I think it'll either end up being a very, very, like, say, a fun MMO, that PvP is great, we got the Dark Age of Camelot guys working on it, and they did a great job, and the PvP is, is fantastic, and the MMO players love it. It succeeds that way, and then the test fans are left out. Or they decided to go the other direction, and they really catered more to the test fan. I don't know if they'll be able to strike the perfect balance. I think it's going to be one or the other. 
So that's that's where my prediction lies. My hopes obviously lies with the marriage of these two groups in that they do strike that perfect balance. And I'm rooting for them to doing that and I'm following them for that reason. It's because I, I hope they are able to merge the two. But I think even if this and I don't I don't think ESO is gonna fail. I think there's just there's too much backing on it. There's too and, many fans that are they may even be blinded by just the fact that it's a test game that they won't even admit it's a terrible game. But I honestly think it is going to uh, well, succeed uh, and immensely. Star Wars The Old Republic had a lot of people behind it, and they still... Like, they had a massive amount of people. Yeah, but look at that game. Even if it does fail, it is still going to succeed in the fact that it is branching the distance, or, uh, you know, shortening the distance between the MMO crowd and the, the single-player crowd. So it is going to uh, be a good stepping-off point, I guess, uh, for a test fan to play an MMO who hasn't played an MMO. Like uh, Shank from uh, Elder Scrolls Off the Record, he's never played an MMO before. This is going to be his first one, and it is going to help introduce him to the genre. Which I think is great. Yeah, and it's going to be the exact opposite for the MMO crowds who have not played a test game, which I know there's some out there. So they are going to be they're going to experience uh, at least a test esque game. Uh, so yeah, we'll that see is going if it's to, yeah true test or not going we'll to at see. least introduce them to the universe sure. as a whole. So I mean yeah it's it's going to be good for bridging that gap between uh, two such immensely different genres. All right, so that's uh, our spiel on what if ESO fails and how we feel about that. Let's move on into our own question of the week, since we are filming this on Wednesday, due to family... I don't, I don't want to call it issues, because it's not an issue. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> due to family matters. Wait, no, that's a show. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. Due to family business. We are moving on to our own question of the week, since the developer question of the week isn't out yet. Hi, I'm Josh, co-host and producer at the Shoddy Cast channel. If you could stretch out your hand and confirm one feature for the Elder Scrolls Online, what would it be? I mean, if development time, money, like nothing was an issue, you could live, you were, you're God, and you could just stretch out your hand and say, this is an Elder Scrolls Online, this is a feature, it's fully fle fleshed out, fully realized, what would it be? Um, I don't want it to be, like, unless I'm in Skyrim, I don't want it to look like Skyrim because that was a little too uh, dull uh, overall. It just, it, it, there wasn't enough contrast. You're talking about the environments. Yes. But it being all of Tamriel, we're going to see contrast uh, as you go from zone to zone. So, I don't know. I just want it to be more mature. Now, I know this is more of a T-rated game, but even still, I, I want it to be more mature. At least a more mature approach. Sure. Don't make it you, cartoon. You're an adult. You want to play a game that treats you like an adult. Yeah. That's that's a fair wish. And, uh, yeah, definitely. I could get behind that for sure. So I don't know if you can call that a feature, but <laughs> that's, that's what hey, I it's want. It's an aspect. You could stretch out your hand and be like, I want this game to treat me like an adult. That's a good answer. All right, what would I say? Man, that was really good. I don't even know Thank what you. I want to say to that now. Um, mine's going to sound lame. That sucks. Um, <laughs> I wanted a fully realized crime system to be in the game at launch. They talked about a crime system. Uh, they talked about having some sort of crime system like in morality. place. morality. No, they were talking about morality. Yeah, that's about choices and stuff. But they were talking about adding a crime system, system later with, like, the Dark Brotherhood after the game's launched. And I would want a fully realized, fully fleshed out crime system in the game at launch. And what I mean by that, and why I want it, is because I think the crime system is extremely, extremely important to character freedom and choice. And it makes your decisions a lot more, well, they carry a lot more weight in the world. And what test game did it the best, at least from what I played from it and what I've uh, spoke to to people who are particularly fond of Morrowind? There's a couple out there. There's a couple people that like Morrowind. I just a few. Yeah, just a few of them. And, uh, and that game did, like crime extremely well in the fact that you could kill literally like anyone you wanted there weren't these marked quest givers that were important and you could just knock them unconscious like everything 
was killable. Every person. And you killed a guy, you had to live with the consequences. Like, the world reacted to that consequence. So let's, like, take Skyrim, for example. If you wanted to end the rebellion in a day and go kill o Ulfric Stormcloak in his keep, like, you could do that. And there were consequences to the action. He wasn't this marked character that was too too important to die, you know? To have... Now, how the hell they would do that? That's why this question was worded very specifically. I have no idea how that could be an implemented in an MMO correctly. But if I could even get a fraction of that in an, in, in an Elder Scrolls MMO, I think it would be a lot of fun. I'm a bad person. I'll say it. So what if I kill I'll... a chicken, though? Will I be immediately killed by guards? No. <laughs> no. That should... You should get a warning. Seriously. Like a slap right? on the hand. Like... Pay us a couple golds, we'll yeah. let you be on your way. At least compensate us for the damn chicken, and we'll let you be on your way. Death, a little too far. A little too harsh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, fully realized crime system would be good. Because, as I said, I'm a bad person. Alright, so moving into the community segment, we will go ahead and start answering a couple questions. We are kind of running out of time, so we will go ahead and get into these. Uh, so one thing I love in games when it is offered is actually being a viable unarmed player. So in Skyrim I run a barbarian werewolf wild man class and beat to death bandits with my fists. <laughs> Do you think I'll be able to run something like that in ESO and still be viable? So uh, unarmed combat has not been uh, confirmed in ESO by any means. I've not seen any kind of fist weapons. Uh, brass knuckles, nothing like that. And that's how they should do it. That's how they should, but we have not seen any confirmation of this. But again, you know, it's something they could add later on in the game. I mean, they got plenty of skill lines already. What's another couple? Yeah, this is a matter. This is like a developer choice because I don't think Unarmed is popular enough to where developers want to go out their way to flesh it out. You know, in Oblivion, we saw it a bit more done right skyrim like they didn't feature any unarmed like there was no unarmed skill line which there should have been because i think people like that the question is is there enough people that like it for them to justify the development time for it and i don't know let, let us know in the comments because i think the people who liked unarmed combat are pretty vocal about it yeah um I've never, never played a test game doing on a... There's way too many badass weapons to forge and, and create and to use and, and pick up to where I'd want to use my fists instead, but... Uh, uh, so, uh, as, as the game sits now, uh, it's pretty unviable to do so. It's not, to, not saying that you couldn't just not equip a weapon and use just uh, class skills and other skills, magic skills. You can still do that, but then you're still going to miss out on like the stats on the weapon and stuff, and a lot of damage because a lot of your DPS is going to be coming from weapons as your, your other skill lines are going to be more situational yeah. type. Unless the developer goes out of their way to actually make systems for this thing, you're not going to want to use it. So, if unarmed is very important to you, you know, go on the forums and let them know. Let them know, like... Unarmed would be cool to have in the game, and it all depends on how much it's in demand, you know, how many people actually want it. So we will now go into thanking our sponsors for the week. Now keep in mind, again, we are recording this on Wednesday, so if you had uh, donated after this point, uh, we will get you guys next week. So first donation was from Mark Dixon. Thank you, sir. And then once again, uh, another legendary <laughs> legendary Dragonborn status of uh, Sterling Jennings. Thank you, sir. Once mm, again. Dragonborn. Let's all have a moment of silence. Sterling Jennings is our number one contributor. Just a moment of silence for Sterling Jennings. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, thank you, sir. And uh, again, if you guys do want to donate, just go to our website, shoddycast.com, and below the weekly polls, which I have finally updated with new questions, uh, you can go ahead and hit the donation button, and anything you, can, you contribute is welcomed, and we thank you for it. All right, so uh, before we close out the episode, I want to thank all the people who sent in their gameplay footage for us to use. It is so, it's much, much appreciated. And uh, yeah, that's the footage you've seen in the background today was brought to you courtesy by uh, one of our nice, friendly donors. So uh, thanks for that. Thanks for tuning in, guys. This has been the Shoddy Cats. Don't forget to like and share. I have Josh. 
And I've been Kyle. We'll catch you later. Bye.